Eight o'clock. Oh, eight o'clock is on. Hello, Hoaglands. Beautiful boy to say hello. Good morning. Hey, Carmen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Jerry. <clears throat> not super loud today. Okay. Do I sound like a chipmunk today? No, sir, no. you do not. <laughs> Good. You're coming through clear today. Good morning, Dale. Hi. Hi, Ray. Hi, Mike, Karen. Good morning. Where's the Morning, birthday everyone. girl? Uh, you mean there's Joy? Mike. There's Mike. Hi. How are hey. you, Dale? Good. Is she still celebrating? Who's the birthday girl? Oh, that was uh, May Leonard. Oh, well, but she'll be here in a minute. She'll okay. be here in a minute. Yes, yeah, she's still celebrating. <laughs> Good. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We had a very morning, active. Act, we had a very active weekend. All of our children, well, most of our children were here, and uh, so we had a wonderful celebration. Oh, great! Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Ray. Hi, Terry. Hey, Mike. How are you? Hi, Mike. I'm okay. We had a snake in the basement this morning. Ooh. Oh, great! Ooh. Mm -hmm. Nice. Do you know what kind it was besides um, a rope? <laughs> uh, it was about that big. Uh -huh. snake. And uh, we think it was a black snake. You're using past tense. The, they, I, I don't mind snakes as long as they're not in my house. <laughs> the, they eat mice. <laughs> Mice, mice would not stand a chance in this house with our three cats. Right. I know. I was good. That's what I was going to say. The the snake might have might have uh, to, to go elsewhere to find a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> it was very startling. <laughs> yeah, I did scream just a little. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is your tooth better, a uh, joy? Is is what? Your tooth. Your, your oh, pain it's much your better. Tooth. It's much better. Is that Dale? Yes. Yeah, Thank good. you. Good. Thank you. Um, antibiotics help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. Ru <laughs> Go ahead. Root canal Wednesday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Joy has one in her future. Mm -hmm. I turned mine off. Mm -hmm. mm. I turned the Wi Fi off. Oh, yes. Because you can't see you. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Good morning. There's Karen. Hello, everybody. Hey. Good morning. <clears throat> Look, you can just see the fur behind me. Oh, yeah. Huh? At least it's not her people. She can see me. It's screaming. Through that. <laughs> Does it scream mm -hmm. more like loudly? Whatever. This morning it sounded like training. I think you made the trip. I think you made the trip. I'm just now setting up our Facebook live feed.
It is so good to see you all this morning. <laughs> we had a small but mighty crowd at our eight o'clock service. I was wondering how the, <laughs> you know, the weather and everything is. And uh, we're still aiming to have our four o'clock service on the lawn. We just might need to bring galoshes. <laughs> <laughs> Hip waders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Raining by noon, so. yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll be much drier than it was this morning. Yeah. And that, uh, let's see, I'm seeing everybody. Morning, Carmen. Good morning, Grace. Morning. 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 <sighs> morning, David. I'm putting morning. a link to our morning in the chat Jake. if you need Good it. Good morning. There you go. Hope, Good morning, everyone. hope I'm not driving you nuts, Faith, with all my questions. Oh, thank you so much. That was quite oh, wow. a lot of free offerings. Wow. <laughs> I know. Okay. Ready for I another hate to turn down question. free things. <laughs> okay. Here's Fabian. Good morning, Fabian. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, everybody? Hi. Good. How are you? All right. Hey, Kama. Hey, Hoaglands. There's Julie. I see her. No, no, you stayed home. Good morning, Marshall. Good morning, Eric. Did your team lose last night? You look awful sad. <laughs> oh, you must be a hokey. <laughs> I don't have a team. I'm on. I'm on everybody's team. I'm on everybody. Oh, right. Nice that you could join us. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Paige. My team did pretty good last night. Morning, night. Martha. Who, who's your team, Marshall? Carolina. Okay. Yeah. yeah we you had that. a good day then. Yes, very good. Good morning, Shirley. We sent them a lot of tuition. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to wait a, a minute more before we get started. Folks are still arriving. I've put the bulletin link in the chat in case anybody needs it. There it is. There we go. And uh, Martin says good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Where's Martin? He's next here. Good morning. Good morning, Martin. Oh, there he is. The sweet boy. The sweet boy. Good morning, Katerina. I'm just kidding. Good morning. I'm uh, muting everybody here now. So uh -oh. um, it's good to see everybody. And uh, we're going to get ready for the service ahead of us. The ch uh, bulletin link is in the chat. And uh, so let's just take a few moments now as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Hello, my name is Jenny Wilder and I'm the rector of St. Anne's Episcopal Church here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and it is my joy to welcome you this morning. Everything you need is in the bulletin and the link to the bulletin can be found in the chat box to your right. You are welcome to stay afterwards for our coffee hour. And we're just going to now take a few moments and prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. Good morning and welcome.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you promise us peace that passes all understanding. Give us the courage and the creativity to see your peace as an attainable reality for all the world. As we pause, help us to visualize your peace an end to violence of thought, word, and action in religion, in government, in business, in our streets, our schools, our churches, our homes, and ourselves. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the Negeb, the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord had sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join and reading the psalm together in unison. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born, 
from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of the earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so we should rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you have afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. A reading from First Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of, God, of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we see praise from mortals whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now when the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In our gospel text today, the Pharisees are testing Jesus, trying to catch him in a gotcha moment. A lawyer asks Jesus which commandment in the law is the greatest. Jesus replies, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. In this statement, Jesus is quoting the Shema, an affirmation of Jewish faith from Deuteronomy in the Hebrew Bible. Jesus continues on in his response to the Pharisees, and a second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Here, Jesus is paraphrasing a portion of Leviticus, also in the Jewish scriptures. Jesus Jesus follows the rabbinic law, the laws of his ancestors. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It can feel challenging, though, to love God with our entire beings, to love ourselves and our neighbors. How can we love so boldly and earnestly when attentions are divided, when anxiety, fear, death, and division plague our culture, when it is often easier to notice apathy or hatred or self-doubt than it is to notice love? David White, in his poem, Sweet Darkness, writes, When your eyes are tired, the world is tired also. When your vision has gone, no part of the world can find you. Many of us are tired. Perhaps we're physically tired. Maybe we're zoomed out. Maybe we have caregiver fatigue. Maybe we're emotionally tired. Maybe we're spiritually tired. How then can we follow the commandment to love God wholeheartedly and love our neighbors as ourselves? Can we muster up the continuous strength? White's poem continues on. Time to go into the dark where the night has eyes to recognize its own. There you can be sure You are not beyond love. The dark will be your womb tonight. The night will give you a horizon further than you can see. 
in the midst of tired eyes, of fear, of brokenness, of darkness, somehow a small glimmer of hope breaks in. The smiling eyes of a stranger at the grocery store, a healing breath of crisp autumn air, a spiritual or sacramental taste of the heavenly banquet at the Eucharist. Even in the struggle, something reminds us that you are not beyond love. Unexpectedly, grace breaks in, even when we might not feel it, or maybe even when we would rather just stay stuck in the brokenness, the darkness, the tiredness, the fear. Sweet grace breaks in and reminds us how incredibly loved we are and gives us a glimpse of that connection, that communion, that love that we share in with God and our neighbors as well. The dark will be your womb tonight. The night will give you a horizon further than you can see. Grace breaks in, and in the midst of darkness, new life emerges, a new horizon, a hopeful, sacred vision for how to orient our lives and our communities. Our egocentric tendencies then begin to fade, the ones that tell us that we can do it all, that we should only love people if they agree with us, that we can create the strength all on our own, that we can judge who is worthy of love and who is not. Instead, the night gives us a horizon further than we can see, like those holy ones who followed the star of Bethlehem, we too are guided to new life, guided to our truest selves in Christ. We discover that we are not what we do, we are not who we vote for, we are not the mistakes that we have made, we are not the success of our work, we are not what people say about us. As Henry Nouwen describes it, we are not all these things that keep us quite busy, quite occupied, and often quite preoccupied about not telling the truth about who we are. I am here to remind you in the name of God that you are a beloved child of God. God says to you, I have called you from all eternity. I love you an everlasting love. We are guided to new life in Christ and are reminded of that connection, that communion, that love that we share in with God and our neighbors. Even with our tired eyes, it starts to feel possible to love, to walk in love as Christ loved us. In our gospel text today, after outlining the two central commandments, to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves, Jesus explains that on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets, two major sets of texts that comprise the Hebrew scriptures, hang on, depend on these central commands. Jesus, too, would hang upon a cross, experience death, and also experience new resurrection life. This love that Jesus commands is not a sentimental or a superficial love, but one that is patterned after the cruciform journey of the Christian path, a grace-filled shift from brokenness toward new life. We begin to let go of our prideful tendencies to be emptied of those barriers which separate us from God, ourselves, and our neighbors, and we find a new, healing, hopeful life. We become guided by our truest selves in Christ. This is not a one-time shift, but an ongoing life of becoming, a daily walk with Jesus. I'll conclude today with a story, a modified Japanese folk tale retold in Women Who Run With the Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. 
There once was a woman who lived in a pine forest. Her spouse was away fighting in a war for many years, and when he was released from duty, he came home in rough condition. In desperation, the woman sought help from a healer, asking her for a potion that would make her husband loving once again. The healer assured her, this I can do for you, but I need a special ingredient. Unfortunately, I am all out of the hair from the crescent moon bear. So you must climb the mountain, find the black bear, and bring me back a single hair from the crescent moon at its throat. Then I can give you what you need, and life will be good again. The woman climbed into the foothills, trudged through thorny vines and over large rocks, then up the mountain. Soon her feet were wet and cold, but she still climbed higher, for she was a woman who loved. She searched all day and finally found a gigantic black crescent moon bear who roared fiercely. She reached into her bundle and placed the food she'd brought into a bowl outside the bear's den, then retreated back to her shelter. The bear ate the food up in one single gulp. The next evening and for many more nights, the woman did the same, setting out the food. But these times, instead of retreating back to her shelter, she only retreated halfway. One dark blue night, the woman felt brave enough to wait even closer to the bear's den. She put the food in the bowl outside the den and stood right by the opening. The bear turned its head sideways and roared so loudly it made the bones in the woman's body hum. Oh, please, dear bear, I've come all this way because I need a cure for my spouse. The bear peered into the woman's frightened face. For a moment, the woman felt she could see the entire mountain ranges, valleys, rivers, and villages reflected in the bear's old, old eyes. A deep peace settled over her, and the trembling ceased. Please, dear bear, could I have one of the hairs from the crescent moon on your throat? The bear paused. This woman would be easy food. Yet suddenly he was filled with pity for her. You've been good to me. You may have one of my hairs. The woman put one hand on the bear's neck and with the other took hold of a single glossy white hair. Quickly she pulled it. Oh, thank you, Crescent Moon Bear. Thank you so much. The woman bowed, but the bear growled and lumbered forward a step. She turned and fled down the mountain as fast as she could. She ran back to the healer who sat tending a fire. Look, look, I have found it. A hair of the crescent moon bear cried the woman. Ah, uh, good. This is an authentic hair, said the healer with a smile. Then suddenly the healer turned and threw the hair deep into the fire where it popped and crackled and was consumed in a bright orange flame. No, cried the woman, what have you done? Be calm, all is well, said the healer. Remember each step you took to climb the mountain and gain the trust of the bear. There is no potion to help your husband, but there is great hope. You are that hope. Just as you spent many days journeying to get the authentic hair, approaching the bear with great caring, patiently waiting for its trust and its love, so you must also approach your spouse. The gentle patience of your love will be his healing. Even when our eyes are tired, can we stay open to the possibility of resurrection life, noticing glimpses of grace as they break into our daily lives, transformative moments that help us to find new life, to love more deeply, 
a true self-giving love that manifests in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds in this world. We glimpse that connection, that communion, that love that we share in with God and our neighbors. May we walk in love as Christ loved us. Amen. Rising as you are able, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Sam and Anne, for their, this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church and Pennock Village, Thompson Child and, Deve and Family Focus, and Episcopal Farm Workers Ministry. I ask your prayers for peace for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. At this time, if you have any prayers, petitions, intercessions, or thanksgivings that you would like to offer up, Feel free to do that out loud and conclude your prayer by saying, this is my prayer, and collectively we will respond, this is our prayer. I ask your prayers for Sarah and her family and for Arthur and his family as they all deal with multiple health issues compounded by the pandemic. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our prayer. prayer. Pray for Marnie, who is undergoing treatment for cancer. This is my prayer. This, this is our prayer. I pray for Ann and Larry, our friends, who have just been diagnosed with COVID-19. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. I ask a prayer, uh, offer a prayer of thanksgiving for my mother-in-law who is moving to North Carolina permanently at the end of the week. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. We pray for Susan, Sandy, and Mark. This is our prayer. 
This is um, our prayer. prayer. Pray for my colleague and friend, Robert, who has been battling cancer for quite a while and found out this week that treatments are no longer available. I pray for his peace of mind and um, for him to feel the love around him. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. I pray for Gary's sister that she might have a closure to the house whenever that happens, but that it might come soon. I also pray for a good friend in Texas who celebrates her birthday today and for her daughter, her daughter who is suffering from the cancer. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. prayer. I pray prayers of gratitude for the uh, healing of Meredith Rod, our granddaughter. And thank you for those who have prayed for her, too. This is my prayer. This is our, this is our prayer. prayer. We offer up prayers and thanksgivings that Bernadette's husband, Kevin, will begin a new job on November the 1st. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. We also pray for those who are scared to cast their vote. We also pray for Thanksgiving for Lucia's sixth birthday. This is Bettina and Jason's prayer. This, this is, is our, our prayer. prayer. This is our prayer. I wanted to say thanksgivings and prayers for Grace's birthday yesterday. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our, our prayer. prayer. I get prayers of thanksgiving for the outgoing vestry members and the incoming vestry members um, with best wishes for the coming year. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our prayer. prayer. I ask your prayers for the school board as it meets Tuesday evening to make decisions about delaying the return of students. This is my prayer. This is this is our share thank, prayers of thanksgiving for the marriage of my friends Tony and Cleo yesterday and give thanks for the ways they uh, made sure everyone could participate safely. This is my prayer. This is, this is our prayer. I ask your prayers for the family of Murphy Davis, a friend um, who uh, died this past week and her husband, she's survived by her husband, Ted, and her daughter, Hannah, and son-in-law, and, and brothers and sisters. So this is my prayer. This, this is, is our, our prayer. prayer. Are there any other prayers in the community? Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer of thanksgiving for the birth of my great nephew. Uh, everything. This is our prayer. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. We give thanksgiving for the birthdays this week, including Lucia Wilkinson, Patia East, and Lisa Kirby. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, Comfort and relieve your sick servants suffering with COVID-19 and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. 
Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purpose on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us greet one another. Peace, peace everybody. Peace, Beverly. Everybody. Happy birthday, Mike Grace. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Cam. Peace, hey, Carolyn. Hey, peace, hey, Cam. peace, Jocelyn. Peace, Julie. Peace, Carmen. Peace, Jack. Carmen. Peace, John. Cameron. Peace, Carmen. Peace, Barbara. Peace, Josh. Hey, Martha. Peace. Happy birthday, Lucy. Peace, Carmen. Peace, Beverly. Peace, 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 Ray and May. Peace, Peace, Stuart. Peace, Stuart. Peace, 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 and with your spirit. Uh oh. Peace, baby. Peace, Barbara. Peace. Um, we're going to Joyce. with our service. Um, this morning, we are commissioning our, our vestry. The liturgy we have is in the Book of Common Prayer. No, it's in your bulletin. That's, that's where it is. This is where it is on my phone. And it's whatever bulletin you've got in front of you. Julie Risher, I invite to help start this whole process of commissioning our best. Julie is our senior warden for the year okay. okay. So, Julie? Okay. On behalf of the Congregation of St. Anne's, I, I present Debbie Walker, our junior warden, Susan Giles Conman, our clerk of the vestry. Nancy Young, our treasurer, Bob Campbell, Heather Morgan, class of 2021, Ray Leonard, Jason Wilkinson, class of 2022, Eric Elkstrand, sorry, Daryl Hamill, and Grace Phillips, class of 2023. Have these leaders been elected by the congregation or appointed by the vestry in a accordance with the bylaws of our congregation. They have. To the new leaders, to everybody in the vestry, do you commit yourselves to carry out the responsibilities of the office to which you have been appointed? I do. I do. Do you reaffirm your commitment to follow Christ and to serve this congregation in his name? I do. I do. I do. To the whole congregation of St. Anne's, will you do all in your power to support these leaders with your prayers, your honest yet gracious communication with them, and your willingness to help them carry out Christ's ministry in this church? We will. We will. We will. Let us pray. 
In the name of this congregation, I commission you for this work and pledge you in our prayers, encouragement, and support. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you that, is, that, is, that in this and in all things, you may do God's will in the service of the kingdom of Christ. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon these persons who have now reaffirmed their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give them courage, patience, vision and strength and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us read together our mission statement. Knowing we seek to manifest the love of Christ through worship, justice, and community. And as we prepare to set our minds and hearts toward the table, a point of privilege in Thanksgiving for the folks who are rolling off the vestry, whether they were elected or serving, to Julie Myberg, our outgoing clerk. To, to John Miracle, to Addison, our outgoing junior warden, and to well, Mark Murphy, who was the steward and the captain of this incredible year that we've had together as our senior warden. We go with our thanks and our prayers and our hearts that you will consider running again once it's <laughs> able to. <laughs> <laughs> So on behalf of the Parish of St. Anne's, thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Hello, my name is Julie Myberg. My husband and I arrived at St. Anne's shortly after moving to Winston-Salem a little more than three years ago. I've been asked to share my pledge story, which I honestly have never considered to be much of a story. I give because I'm asked to give for the good of the whole. Simple as that. As long as I can remember, I assumed a 10th percent tithe to the church was part of the universal order. As a child, I religiously brought my offering envelope to church and continued that practice out of habit or a simple sense of obligation into adulthood. Pretty cut and dry, I'd say, but not really. Upon reflection, I believe that the community at St. Anne's is my true reason for giving. Stan and I found St. Anne's very akin to our previous parish where we were married. The passing of the peace tradition at St. Anne's resonated with us. The first Sunday we attended St. Anne's, we sat next to Sandy Carter, she greeted us at the peace and after the service asked us to join her at the coffee hour where she introduced us to other members. And before we knew it, we were being photographed by Robert Merritt. And as you know, that is the gateway to becoming a part of St. Anne's community. The welcoming and nurturing continues. So I pledge to support the continued development of the community and ideals St. Anne's embodies. This community strives to uphold a lifestyle that I value, a lifestyle that loves one another, forgives one another, hopes in one another, and has faith that God's peace is for everyone. 
For that, I am grateful and wish to show that gratitude by giving as I can. Let me invite you to join me in completing and returning a pledge card by October 28th. It is a statement of our commitment to support St. Anne's as we grow in our faith individually and as a community.
All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when He had given thanks to you, He broke it and He gave it to His disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Anne and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and, our, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
on behalf of the parish, Holy Eucharist will be received by Mary and Katerina. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we have graciously accepted us as living members of your sons and Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Having been fed at this table to go out and feed others, a few announcements. Greetings, friends. Today, our newly commissioned vestry will have a meeting, um, and you are welcome to attend it. If you would like to attend today's vestry meeting, just put your name and email in the chat box, and I'll make sure to, that you get that Zoom link. Also, um, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. It's a big day uh, for St. Anne's. We're going to do our in-gathering during that service. But we're also asking folks if you'd like to remember someone, a saint in your own life during the service next week to please send a picture of that person as, long, as well as their name to me at rector at wsorg I'm gonna compile them all and put them into a video. And I have a plea that if you have a picture of Keith Sharp to please send that to me so that he may also be included in our service next week. I also want you to remember that next week we set our clocks back one hour. Isn't that lovely? We get a gift. 2020 has taken a lot from us, but now we get at least one hour of sleep extra. So make sure to set your, your clocks back next week. On election eve, Monday, November the 2nd, we'll be having a prayer service at 7 p.m. This will be prayers and silence and light and to say hymns. So um, make sure to mark that on your calendar and we'll send the bulletin out ahead of time so that you have that. And I also wanna remind you all that we'll, our adult formation class that begins on September November the 9th is Christian Essentials. It meets at 7 p.m. on Monday evenings, and it's a six-week class, but you have to sign up for it, and I have put the link to that almost. It's going to be in the chat box here in just a second, um, but we're looking at the, the class can tap, tap taps out at uh, 10 people total, so uh, please make sure to sign up for that so we'll know in advance who's coming for that class. And I believe those are all the announcements I have for you. I don't see anybody who wants to attend the vestry meeting today, but you have a little time to change your mind. My friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those we travel with. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And rest assured that God is infinitely more concerned with the hope of our future and the sins of our past and may the blessing of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare to uh, sing our concluding hymn.
Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Have a good week, everyone. Have a great week, everyone. Be well, all. Good to see you. Great music. Great music. Fantastic. Yes, good music as always. Beautiful. Hey, Cameron. <laughs> Sorry, hey, Jason, Jason, you can yeah. clearly see that we are a house divided. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, hey, Cameron. I was going to say, I was going to say that Sherry could keep a Nola car, but I got to take yours away today. <laughs>